a choice right now, right now, between fear and love. It's just a run. Out of the dark night of ignorance and into the shining light of truth. Expounding reality. A population of citizens capable of critical thinking. We don't see things as they are, we see them as we are. There's a, a level of reality where everything dissolves into a, an ocean of energy. We empower our experience by insisting on our authenticity. That's very profound. Very Expanding reality. Welcome to Expanding Reality. I am your host, Brandon Thomas. On this episode, we got the honor to sit down with Mama Shell. She is fascinating, guys. Uh, she just started her own podcast called Ascension Immersion. It will be linked down in the show notes, of course, as well as all the other ways to find her. Uh, on this one, we go deep. Uh, if you know anything about Mama Shell, uh, then you know how awesome this is. If you don't, stick around. She's wonderful. Uh, we talk about all sorts of cool stuff. Her personal journey. Uh, also, like I said, her podcast that we're doing, uh, Consensus Reality. Uh, it's finally time to sit down and talk to somebody who talks about that as well. So it was really, really cool. Um, uh, karma, which is great. She has a fantastic read on karma and how to interpret it. Uh, also, the human game, Ascension Cheat Codes. Guys, we, we run the gamut on this one, and she is fascinating. So you're really going to love this episode. So like I said, links uh, down there for all the ways to find her. If you want to expand your experience with us here on the show, uh, check the link down there uh, titled Expanding Reality Podcast, and that's where everything's at. So go check that thing out. So without any further ado, let's get to this damn thing with Mama Shell. All right, everybody out there, welcoming to the show. It is a very special episode. We have Mama Shell hanging out with us all the way from Costa Rica. How are you doing this evening? I'm fabulous. <laughs> I'm really great. It's hard not to be great here in Costa Rica. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, uh, you know, uh, follow you on TikTok. Uh, that is where my wife met you, and that is how we got in contact. So I've been a big fan of uh, your, your work, your perception, um, your attitude and to be honest with you you're balls you're just like brash um get fucked this is how i feel about it and i i like that approach it's it's got its place and it's very cool you do it well so uh you also just started your podcast so uh, if you don't mind tell me a little bit about that the podcast um is a place where i get to be completely authentically me i have had um multiple shadow bannings from from TikTok especially because that's where I place all of my um, extreme information and actually I hold back quite a bit and I still get shadow banned but you know the, the truths of the the system um, they really don't like me to speak that truth so I started the the podcast and um, I've only had two episodes but I'm really enjoying it because it gives me a chance to really just share everything that I'm feeling uncensored and just put it all out there. <laughs> and I have a lot of information, so I'm super excited to share it all. You do. Well, and as an audio guy, uh, the the jungle sounds in the background are great because I've listened to both of your episodes and I love your your production straight out the gate is very well. You're doing a great job. But I knew you, you're natural. You're just meant for this kind of stuff. So, of course, Ascension Immersion is the name of your show and it will be linked as well as all the ways to find you down in the show notes. So, guys, make sure that you go check her out. She's fascinating. So, uh, if you don't mind, uh, just tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Um I am originally a Texas girl. I moved to uh, the Caribbean of Costa Rica a little over two years ago. And since moving here and like completely deep diving to the depths of healing, I have started a healing village. I'm in the Caribbean. I'm in a place called Punta Uva. It's like the, the suburb, if you will, of Puerto Viejo, which people are very familiar with. It's like a super special place with, um, it's a high, fre high frequency vortex portal, without a doubt. The things that happen here, I mean, you get exactly what you ask for. So I began creating this, um, this place, you know, behind my eyes, I would create this place. I'd envision this beautiful place. And I knew I was going to be helping others and being of service to others through the process of being of service to myself. So I, uh, man, I really, 
I really chose like the depths of hell to be able to to get me to where I am today. So I chose this living experience that triggered the hell out of me. I mean, like all day, every day, I was just getting triggered and like going in back into my cave and being like, ah, oh, what is this? Why do I feel this way? And then I would just like learn how to transmute. I was like alchemizing constantly. And so as soon as I'd come out, you know, sometimes it'd be months, months until I'd break out of this like intense trigger and I'd go back for more. I'm like, okay, well, this is what I'm here for. I'm here to freaking to heal. So like if this person is the person who's going to trigger the hell out of me so that I can figure out all of my darkness, I'm all about it. So I would just like go back for more and then I'd get triggered and I'd go into my cave and I'd process it and transmute it. And so through this process of doing all of this on my own, I learned a lot of tools and I got really, really close to like my higher counsel. And I started having really cool supernatural encounters with um, different stellar beings <clears throat> and, and just like created this really um, aligned, smooth, clear channel for me to be able to hear source. And um, whenever I, whenever I was able to transmute all of this, all of this lower frequency shadow into higher frequency love and compassion is whenever I created everything that I was seeing behind my eyes materialized in front of me. And um, I was like out looking for this place that I kept seeing and I was like, driving my bicycle around in this area and everyone was like, you're not going to be able to get a place there. It's really difficult. And I was like, I don't know. That's not how I work. I get what I want. I'm creating exactly what I need. And I, I came into this property and I was like, Oh my God, it's literally everything I've envisioned. Like, is this is it. This is mine. And so I just came here and I just like all the time I just came and I showed up and I was like, Hey, you ready for me to live here yet? And they were like, there's multiple people who want this property. And I was like, yeah, I know, but it's mine. And so I created a really cool relationship with the owners and um, ended up, I, I, I won and I got the, I got the property. And, um, <laughs> and then as soon as that happened, I was like, Oh crap, I need money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's part of this, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then money came. And, um, and so I, I got this, this property that has four cabinas and I, um, as soon as I, I got here, I started advertising that I was going to have people come and do personal retreats, like come and heal with me one on one. And then about after two clients came and healed with me one on one, I was like, man, there's got to be more to this. Um, I got to be able to reach more people in a certain way where I can be doing this energy exchange. But like, instead of just getting to one person, I want to get to this one person who's going to get to their people. So we're just like creating these major spider webs. And so I took a nap one day and, uh, I woke up from my nap and I had this, um, I had this Instagram message from a follower and said, uh, are you doing any mentorship programs? And as soon as she said that, I remembered my dream and my nap and it was me doing a mentorship program. And I was like, Yes. And so uh, I contacted my assistant and I was like, so we're doing a mentorship program. It's going to be for three months. People are going to come and live here. I'm going to teach them all the things. And then they're going to go and they're going to teach all the things. And it's this is how we're going to do it. And she was like, cool, I'm into it. And I was like, who the hell's going to come and live here for three months? Like, it sounds amazing. But like, is this really going to happen? And so um, it's really happening. And I have like many people for 2022 who have already um, put down their deposit and like, this is really bumping. Like, this is like what people want. They want to get out of the matrix and they want to get into new earth and they want to learn how to live in new earth. And, and, and new earth is where I am, you know, like I'm in a high frequency portal. I'm in a, in a, a beautiful community of people who, don't um, contribute to the third, third dimensional hologram. <clears throat> they don't participate 
in the Maxine, the, the Vax, they don't participate in all of the, the programming. And it's like, it's just a beautiful, very abundant community with the same like-minded people. So I know that this is new earth. I know this is what we're doing here. And so now I'm, I have this property and I'm like, how the hell? Wow. Like I'm super powerful. I created an entire property and in some way I am completely running the show and it's working <laughs> and every day. I'm like super stoked for myself. Like, wow, this obviously means I have a huge mission. If I'm, if I was given this, if I was able to create this and like, it's, it's working and people like it. So and this is what I do every day. I wake up and I go and hang out with my mentees and we go to the beach and we just talk about ascension and we just talk about how we can um, reframe all of our old earth program beliefs and, and shift our timelines. So we're just like constantly shifting timelines and dissolving karma and dissolving timelines and like clearing our bloodline and it's just wild and so powerful and really, really emotional <laughs> as you can imagine is wild. It's insane. But this, this concept of clearing your generational bloodline is something that's very interesting and fairly new to me. Uh, it's probably only a handful of months old in my real conscious understanding. And it's not something I really paid much attention to before that, but now it's fascinating to me and I see it everywhere. And then going, uh, even further to that, there's a young lady I had on the show, um, uh, Serena Faith Masterson, Masterson, and she um, is has has had a lot of trauma, and she explains that that her sole contract was to come back into this life and just be completely shit on the entire time to clear all of it at once. It's almost like this thing that where you can come here and kind of choose the amount of karma that you clear off is my kind of understanding based on your contract that can always be negotiated you know mid-run but it does seem interesting that there's some folks like yourself like her that came in to just clear it all at once you're just like all right let's get it over with that's fascinating to me just even the concept of it and that may explain a lot of things that we misdiagnosed in a medical community or that people <laughs> won't take a look at seriously because they don't consider that part of their paradigm part of what their reality is capable of showing them yeah it's an interesting um, thing. Yeah, from from when I started, um, when I was living in my last situation, the situation where I placed myself into just immense triggers, <clears throat> I kept hearing the, like, me and this person have karma together. We have a lot of karma together. So I started learning and, and receiving all of this information of what is karma, because what we're told is, you know, the karma is a bitch or karma is... Um, if you do bad things, bad things happen to you. And it's like, uh, I mean, <laughs> that's like the littlest, like smallest part of it. But the truth is it's every single energy exchange that we have is creating karma. Hmm. So we're not taught how to control our energy. We're not taught how to manage our energy, energy, because if we were, then we would be all like ascending out of this human game and we wouldn't be slaves for the 3d anymore. Right. So what, what I have, like the karma is probably my um my my most powerful uh teaching i guess you would say it is and because i saw this what, on, oh go ahead go ahead um it's what i it, it's 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 this deep understanding of um that just keeps dumping in on me i keep receiving these downloads deeper and deeper and more of what karma is and it's like karma is energy exchange um, at a high frequency or low frequency, depending on how we manage our energy. And then what an energy exchange is, is creating parallel timelines. So what we're doing literally is we are creating parallel timelines. And these timelines are what our soul has to work through. So like if we're always operating like this, when we come into the human existence, we have a really big cycle of reality. Um, from generational, from our parents, from our past lives. And so what we have to do is we have to work through simultaneously, our soul has to work through all of these different timelines. Well, um, whenever we start being aware that we have these timelines, then we can kind of start dissolving them through healing. But so for instance, you know, if I go in and I start healing this, um, 
wound of my mother, which I work really, really hard on healing this wound, I'm dissolving these timelines that I created through the low frequency energy exchanges that her and I have had in this life and other lives. And what that is doing is healing her simultaneously. So what sh when we're attached to each other, it's like having our a cord attached to every single person we've given our energy to or our power away to, we have parallel timelines with them. And this is why in our dream world, we have these dreams with them because in dream world is when we're clearing karma. And so like, this was my most, I don't know my most recent, but in, in the last few months with my mentees, this realization came in and I was like, oh my God, in dream world, we're freaking clearing karma. And that's why if we have the ability in our waking moment to take care of this karma with people, we don't dream about them. Or if we have dissolved our contract, meaning like with the, the person I used to live with, because I kept facing it every day. No, I'm going to go back for more. I'm going to go back for more. I'm going to keep going in. I'm going to, um, I'm going to have these energy exchanges until I resolve all of my trigger from you. So what I did by continually, continuously going in, I, I finished out our contract. And, you know, it was funny, before I was even aware of this, whenever we split ways and, I, and we were business partners and I came to my new place and people were like, well, what happened? And I was like, we completed our contract. And like, it's real. That's exactly what we did. We literally completed this contract of, that we had whenever we were in our higher council. We were like, okay, this is what I'm going to learn from you. Well, I learned everything I needed to from her and completed this contract. And so... I never, ever, ever dream about her, never, because I don't have any more karma with her because I cleared it in waking time. But like past relationships I have that were really intense, I have karma with that I don't have the ability to um, clear in my waking life because I don't talk to these people. I, I dream about them. And so like the more I'm aware of these dreams and the karma I'm clearing, the message tells me what I need to work on in my waking time, like where I still have unhealed aspects of myself due to the energy exchanges that I had with this person. And when I can heal that, then I don't dream about them as much. And I think what I'm being shown, what I'm remembering is that whenever we get to a point where we're working together with the dream world, whenever we can lucid dream and wake up in our dreams, then we are really dissolving timelines. And once we dissolve all of these timelines that have been created through this um, existence and our other past lives, parallel lives, then we'll start creating our higher frequency timelines with dream world, with waking world together. So essentially, whenever you wake up in this waking world, we're lucid dreaming. Whenever we wake up in our dream world, we're lucid dreaming. So I've woken up, I woke up to the fact that I'm a soul having a human experience. Now I need to completely wake up in my dream world and start working together to create this complete harmony. And that's like, if you do that, that's some master level stuff, <laughs> you know? Like, Fucking hell. That's up there. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds fascinating. So you go into your dream state and are you the same entity just in a different realm or are you experiencing that realm with that entity from that perception? Well, um, from how I am, am receiving the information and remembering the stories of creation is there are multiple of us, multiple forms, different avatars in different forms, um, all operating simultaneously. And so whenever this avatar is resting, our soul goes into another avatar and operates that form. And all of the forms are are working for our highest purpose, our highest good, which is to for our soul's evolution. This humanness is just just human. Like our soul is just trying to learn all the things that it can because we're in our human in our soul form and our highest counsel and our highest self, we're like way up in other dimensions where we don't feel this stuff anymore. 
So whenever we come back into this um, lower dimensional world, we want to feel all the things so that we can continue evolving our soul so that we can just be even more magnificent. So it's like our soul, since it's eternal, just hops from different forms into different realities, taking care of business. You know, I, I I wonder sometimes if we'll ever get this figured out, or if we're even like mentally capable. You know, if the human experience is mentally capable of, of knowing exactly what's going on here. It seems like folks like you get pretty pretty goddamn close. You know, I mean, you get really <laughs> really up there with the with the ideas, and I'm a big fan. And it's it's what's beautiful about it is you're curating your experience based on this, and it's made for an incredible experience for you in this life and this, yeah. you know, these few spins around the sun that we get. Right. So, um, how, how has your friends group changed, uh, when you started integrating some of these practices into your life? Do you even, how talk is my to what any, changed? your friends group, your, your close circle? Do you even talk to anyone else that you did maybe let's say five years ago? No. Yeah. <clears throat> I, um, I ha I've always been, um, unique and had, uh, as my family calls, um, just gifts. And so to my sisters, I'm not, there's nothing weird about my life. Um, they don't know, uh, they can, what they tell me is like, yeah, I follow your TikTok, but I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> but I'm happy for your success, and I'm like, cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but... So I, I still I still talk to them on the surface, you know, tell them what's going on, uh, what's going on at Casa de Seva. Um, I have a couple of friends. Well, actually I actually have like three girlfriends that I've known for a really long time um, that support my mission and they love it. And we can still have conversations and they're open and, and, and conscious. But um there's really not much I have to talk to anyone about with it, about anything really. Um, and I'm okay with that because it, there's no reason for me to use my energy to just talk about crap, you know? And, and, and I feel like most people in my life respect that about me because I've always kind of been this, unique person <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's really not weird for people even the people like when in my uh, hometown I owned a hair salon and my hairstylists they're still friends with me on Instagram and stuff and <clears throat> they don't they don't know exactly what I'm talking about you know to this level but they experienced a lot of my supernatural abilities when we when they worked for me for 10 years you know I would prophesy into their dreams or I would, you know, speak to the unseen. So like they got to experience that, but like where I am now is in a different, a whole different place, but they still can respect that. So I'm really grateful and I, I'm actually um, really grateful for that because I know other people who are, have not been so um, confident their whole life in expressing their uniqueness. I was just weird all the time, you know? So it's like, this is, this is her. <laughs> um, but they have a lot of, uh, you know, they, they have challenges with getting support from their family and friends. And that's, that's unfortunate. Um, but it also comes with a level of confidence that like, I'm weird, if you will. And I like, I like it. I'm okay with it. And if you think that I'm normal, like that, that's not cool, you know? So um, that is something we, we deal with here, you know, with the mentees and whatnot, like me getting them to be, to be super confident in the fact that like, they're going to be misunderstood and that's okay. Because um, as long as we're operating in love, grace, and compassion, then it doesn't really matter how people perceive them and what perception they have of what they're doing. And we get a lot, we get attacked a lot. I mean, I get attacked a lot on social media because of where my mentees are right now. <clears throat> and um, one of them is, is detransitioning. And I've been accused of, you know, um, 
Christianity in some way telling him that he needs to go back to being a woman. And I'm just like, you don't have to give me so much power. Yeah. <laughs> like he, he's going to, she, they are going to figure out this on their own, you know, but like, that's how powerful this, this portal is of healing that he as a, as a trans man decided that he's always been a woman It was just he didn't love himself. And now that he loves, she loves herself, she, they are detransitioning. And it's like, people are going to be pissed about this because that's a huge part of um, the 3D world is the transitioning, the transgender stuff. And I have to be very careful about what I say because I'm, I mean... I can't speak from experience, just whatever, you know, I've seen Radha go through and it's really powerful, but his message or her message, their message, um, is, was so powerful that TikTok actually just completely took off her account, just removed it after getting like a million views. And, um, on this one, one video talking about detransitioning and it's, it's a big deal, you know, like, well, it's interesting. TikTok took that down. I thought they were more woke than that. That's a pretty woke thing. Like you, you want to be all inclusive. And I mean, who gives a shit what people want to do with their lives? Right. So that's fine. But also, I mean, it's very empowering to the narratives that they're, they usually promote is all I'm saying. So it seemed that it's it's interesting. They banned it. That's just odd. Just completely removed uh, that account. Took it down. Hmm. Wild. Right. But, uh, I think it's just the message. It's a powerful message. And, and it is. It, it really yeah. is. And it's something that's an, been more of an interest. <laughs> They're on alert. Hey, we got we got uh, four in here. You're fine. You're good. This is a dog, <laughs> dog-friendly show. You're fine. <laughs> Uh, w- well, I, I was actually wanting to ask you um, about this concepts of uh, consensus reality, and I knew you would be the one to ask. So I've brought this up several times on the show uh, about how perhaps that we are living in different places in the same area geographically, different dimensions, experiencing different things side by side. Now, I saw that you did a video on this, and so will you please talk to me about what the fuck is going on with that shit? <laughs> <laughs> so... Everything is frequency, everything, we're energy, and when energy vibrates, it creates a frequency. And so based on each individual person at their vibration, they are contributing to a certain hologram. There's multiple, but let's say there's a 3D lower frequency hologram. And so many of the people who are programmed they, through their perception of reality, through their programming, through their spell of amnesia that they're under, they what they're projecting is creating that three-dimensional hologram. So what they are experiencing looks really low frequency, is really low frequency. And then you have, let's say, 300,000 of those people in a town, and then you have a 1,000 people <clears throat> who are... Um, operating at a higher frequency. So they've woken up, they um, are aware of the fact that we're souls having a human experience, so they're starting to take inventory of how they exchange energy. They're beginning to um, be more mindful of who they exchange energy with. These are the people that are going internalizing and healing, choosing healing. So they're vibrating at a higher frequency. And their perception of reality is not as programmed through the unlearning as the 3D hologram. So what they're doing is they're projecting and what it is, the holograms are created through the collective projection. So there's a large collective projection creating the 3D hologram. Then there's a smaller uh, projection creating like a 4D hologram. Those are the people who are on the fence. um, That know the information, but aren't yet completely active in it and then there's the 5d hologram so it is literally a frequency um, creating this multi-dimensional reality 
So I, I hear people who say, I experience 5D, I experience the bliss and I experience the peace, but then I go back in and I choose to um, get drunk or do drugs, boom, you go right back into the lower frequency because everything is a frequency. And I do a lot of talk about frequency and a lot about how the vibrational scale, it, it's, it, you know, it's numbered. So like if you're choosing things that are going to bring guilt and shame into your life, you're always going to be operating at the lowest of the vibrational scale. So that is going to hit 2D, 3D always. <clears throat> but if you're working on yourself, you're working on your healing, you're going to experience these higher frequency realities. And so that can mean um, I can be... Uh, at a grocery store and in this line checking out and having a really blissful amazing incredible experience the person at the line next to me can be operating in a lower frequency and they can have the worst experience ever where I can walk into a store and I say and I'm unmasked or something but I'm not living in fear I'm not walking in going I'm going to do this because I can no I walk in and I'm like this is just my life yeah and I walk in and I walk out and people are like, what? Yeah. You didn't have to wear a mask? And I'm like, no, I don't have to wear a mask. Not in my reality. Like, How do you do this? You know, and then they're pissed off. And I'm like, well, you're not going to get there with that attitude. <laughs> but it's literally our perception is creating our projection. So people, and at this, this TikTok I did went <clears throat> crazy. People went mad. Um, and I did a whole live on it and a video on my YouTube about, I was saying Melbourne, Australia, but I was corrected. It's Melbourne, right. Melbourne. They get very upset. Melbourne, yeah. Australia. Mm -hmm. um, but there were people who were saying they live in the city and they have no problems. They're in peace. They don't see any protests. Then there's people who are like angry. There's protests. We need to be fighting. And I'm like, Two different realities in literally the same geographical place. I had someone tell me um, she lives in Melbourne and she was like, I never decide to go and do this, but I was going to go to a peaceful protest. Well, I decided I wanted to walk the streets and just kind of like map out my situation and get a feel of it. And she said she was walking down the street and there were, there were police officers attacking people next to her and she just walked unseen, unfazed. Yeah. The issue is a whole other reality. And that's because these officers are in a low frequency. The people who are angry and are low frequency, frequencies match. Frequencies love to match. That's why whenever you decide, you know, you put yourself around really low frequency people, they really want to pull you down and you start feeling yourself, ooh, what, what is this? What is this feeling? Because frequencies like to match. And if, if we're in a high frequency and people come in our um, in our energetic field and they're operating in a low frequency, they get agitated and they get pissed off and they get triggered because they their frequency isn't matching that high frequency. And you have to be responsible to raise your frequency if you want to be around high frequency people, if you want to be in the light. And that's a responsibility not everybody's willing to take right now. Well, you know, this is um, pictured uh, a lot of places and it's with that, you know, um, that paint, you see it all over the place with paintings of like demons and stuff reaching up into a middle ground where they're yanking things down. And then you say a heaven above where angels are leaning down and kind of pulling you that way. It's, it, that's the attraction of the frequency, the, exactly like what you're talking about. And then of course the observer would be just in the middle, but even just looking at that, you get stressed out thinking of being yanked down to that horrible, awful place, which is a vibration. And then you get a yep. little elated, you know, cause the clouds are pretty and that dude's got wings, you know, and shit. And so that would be nice. And you, you get feelings from it, but it's just, just analogous right it's just a an archetype for this idea well and <clears throat> you, you said um neutrally observing and uh be embodying the the neutral observer standpoint is a master level of healing it's a master level of being in this human experience because i can i have to choose at all times especially with the work that i do to neutrally observe everything so if I'm talking with someone about this horrible, um, you know, it could be like a sexual trauma that occurred and they want me to be angry with their, uh, the person who, who did the abusing and I can't, 
uh, not I could, I could choose that, but it, it, it's the observing of the neutrality because um, this is like a touchy subject, but this abuse <clears throat> didn't happen to this person. This abuse occurred for this person to reach their highest potential. And that's the, that's what I had to come to realization. I've had uh, multiple sexual abusers in my life and I held on to that as a victim for so long and I kept that as my pain. Well, this is how I'm going to suffer and this is why I get to be a bitch and this is why I get to be unhealed because these people abused me. But now I'm, I, I see it in, in such a, <clears throat> a warrior uh, lens, you know, I changed my lens to say, oh, I'm so grateful that I experienced these abusive situations because with those experiences, now I get to offer people a new perspective. I get to show them the light and I get to say, you know, I know what it feels like. And that's why I truly believe why I, I know why my, um, my life, this, this lifetime had the challenges that it did because there's not much <laughs> at all that you can come to me and be like, but this happened to me and you don't understand. I'm like, try me yeah, yeah. <laughs> and look, and look what I did with that. I took it and I transmuted it because we're alchemists. Humans are alchemists because we're energy. And, and it's, it's the choice. Like the people who love to watch the mainstream media, who love to participate in all of that, who love to go protest it. I have to fight. And da-da-da they're choosing to operate in the lower frequency because it's a huge responsibility to choose to go in the higher frequency. Because once you decide I'm responsible for my actions, my energy, um, my healing, then that says I am responsible for these things and I can't blame it on anyone else. Yeah. And we, we talk about on the show uh, quite a bit about spiritual maturity or whatever. Like if this is a place of reincarnation, there's different levels of souls here. If we kind of go with that ideology on this example, then there's different grades or different, um, I guess, rotations of entry that these souls have experienced in this model. So you would have some that need that sort of guidance that need that direction. This is like their first time here. They're being held by the hand a little bit, but they need these rigid, rigid ideologies. But also it's very important to come to that. We've all kind of come to, especially when you start looking into things like we do, that you break out of that. That's part of your story. It has to be, just like you said. Anybody that comes up to you and is like, hey, this is what I experienced and you wouldn't understand, That's you have to be that way. You went through all this shit so that you could be that lighthouse for other people to say, look, I've got way more scars than you do and here's and we're, and you came to me to ask me, so here you go. Here's what I got. Now, the thing back to uh, the supermarket example, I love that because the part of part of one of the understandings I reached as a conspiracy theorist for years was more of a conspiracy analyst approach, which means I just look into them to be informed, but I don't get scared. I don't enter. I don't uh, trade my energy with it. And I don't let any of the negative energy splash onto me. Right. But mm -hmm. what I figured out about this was, is that. Gordon White had a great example on Higher Side Chats one time. Great guy, by the way. Uh, he talked about that uh, your reaction to the situation is part of the situation. Your reaction to the crisis is part of the crisis. And so even those people that don't agree with the mandates or whatever they needed, they still were contributing energy into the system in the way that the system craves. It doesn't give a shit where it gets its negative energy from. And the more divisive and the more juxtaposition the the obvious you know evidence out here is, and again, leading to the to the consensus reality thing, because you can find clear data on either side for the argument. And this is what people are battling over, which just creates divin dissonance, which creates energy into the system. So this is where, like I said, I step back and I stopped Paul revering and shit. Like we can talk about it, but I, what I'd rather let you realize is your power, not how they're fucking you. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'd rather spend my time on. And you you fancy that as well. Yep. And it's a huge, a huge practice of mine is um, <clears throat> uh, anywhere you're putting your energy. Um, so there for a while, like uh, a couple of years ago, I was like, I have to like, this is my chance. All of the things I know about Hollywood and all the things I know about all the politicians, I get to spew it out there because people are finally awake. And so I was just like dumping all of this and I felt so empowered because I was like, I've been holding on to this for 10 years. And then one day I woke up and I was like, Ugh. yeah, 
Yeah. I'm literally feeding that lower frequency, that lower dimensional world, because even though I think I'm exposing it, everything I'm sharing is scaring and putting fear into someone who is unaware of it. So I'm matching fear with fear. What is that going to solve? Not a damn thing. It will not solve anything. Just like going and protesting and throwing things and whatever, you're matching war with war and yeah. anger with anger. That's not how we resolve anything. So I can be aware, completely aware of everything and not attached to it. That's a neutral observer. That gives me complete neutrality. And because I know now that if I put energy and give my power away to these people who are in control, um, then I'm creating more karma. I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> I'm trying to not create any more karma. I want to fully ascend in this lifetime. I am good to go. I don't want to have to come back. Unless I really, really, really need to, but I don't feel like that's going to happen this time. You don't think but so? I you're done. My responsibility is to be neutral. Yeah, and you you think that you'll do that in this one that you're done? You're just not going to come back. I guess we'll see. <laughs> you know what'll happen is you and I will end this thing. We'll go. We'll be in a bar or something up there, um, and passing a hookah around or something like that. And I'll convince you to come back down here, and you'll be like, you know, fucker. <laughs> "Don't fucking do this again." Well, you know, um, I know that if if it's in my contract to create a child or multiple children, then I'll most likely be like, damn, I created a really cool life up in the mountains in the Caribbean of Costa Rica in a beautiful community. I guess I'll go back down there and hang out. <laughs> you know what's beautiful, though, is there's a young lady I had on the show, uh, Karen Swain is her name. She's out of Australia. Amazing. I'll, I'll hook you two up. So, And her okay. thing is she wants to reincarnate here so that she can see the fruits of the labor of the work that we're all doing right now spiritually. I love that concept, right? That's like so optimistic. It gives you so much hope for the future. I mean, I yeah. love that. Well, um, I'm, I'm so glad, glad you brought that up because that's a really powerful um, awareness is I may not and you may not and a lot of people may not see very, they may not be able to fully indulge in the work that we're doing in this lifetime the work that I'm doing is not for myself it's for my nieces and nephews so that they have a place to retreat from it's for my sisters it's for I mean it is for the generations to come to be able to be born into a beautiful free world the work that i'm doing in this lifetime is not going to benefit me as much as it's going to benefit benefit them and that's what is the that's the power of being of service in this lifetime is it is not for us it is for the children everything is for the children and it's for the breaking of the karmic cycles, even for the animals. You know, animals are in huge, major karmic cycles. But if I can do my part and breaking my karmic cycle of, you know, choosing to eat animals, not choosing to eat animals, then that karmic cycle can be broken um, through the whole animal kingdom, you know. And I know that my legacy is not, it's not specifically for anything to do with me. But for my nieces and nephews, I will do this all day long. And that's the kind of mentality we have to have as the conscious community is like, I might, I, I know what I'm creating, but the castle and the amazing community, this is definitely for the generations to come. You know what I love about this the most is though, it's like the ultimate spirit guide shit because you are, if you go with the model like that we're all one and we're all experiencing it self-subjectively and then you're just everything here, just at different levels of consciousness, then yes, you are setting up an easier playland for the next generation to experience so where they can actually play a little bit, right? And we yeah. talk about this kind of starting behind the line idea and what we'd like to do for every generation ahead is just to move that bar a little closer. Maybe you could start yeah. at zero. Maybe you could start a little ahead, right? And, and that's the idea of what we're talking about. But you know, if you choose to reincarnate, 
Uh, I think yeah. it'd be pretty cool. We should go plant a couple trees and we'll see what they look like in like a couple thousand years, you know, from yeah. <laughs> see, I like that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, or just go work on a castle for like, you know, do one brick or something every lifetime yeah. <laughs> and then just build this dope ass place, right? In some hollow earth cavern or something. Well, um, I, I also wanted to get a little bit deeper into karma with you, but also I want to ask you about the human game. So what do you think this whole fucking thing is like this, everything <laughs> out here? It's a crazy okay, let experience. See. Let me see how, where I should begin this. Um, okay, so the way I've seen this human game is <laughs> the we consciousness consciousness created a. Okay, so we are super, super stellar beings. Um, the, the human is also just a form of a being that happens to operate <laughs> in the lower dimensions. Um, the avatar that is this human being comes from higher dimensional um, energy. And so what we did in our higher dimensional world is decide it would be fun if we had the opportunity to um, relearn what it's like to be down there, um, to be in the energy of competition, where we feel all, all of the emotions because in higher dimensions, we don't feel those things anymore. We've already evolved past that. That's why you'll hear some, some people say, um, we, we are from the future. And that's kind of true if the future was a thing, but linear time isn't real. So we're not from the future, but we are from our most evolved state of being and so the the consciousness decided we're going to create this simulation and what we get to do is you get to decide do you want to go down there do you want to go and play in this game here are the rules you know you come in you forget everything you forget that you're powerful you completely forget where you came from you completely forget that you um, are eternal and can manipulate energy and yada 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 you do all these things and then you're just going to kind of keep participating in it and here's your team so like our soul family our higher council, that's our team. And then we all get together and we create these contracts. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. It's like it's like what I think of whenever people are playing the games and they have like teams that they talk to. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, man, go in there and get them. I don't know, I'm not a gamer, but <laughs> something like that. So we don't, we don't wake up all completely and realize it until we do. But we started, whenever we started and we're babies in the game, we're at our, our least amount of consciousness. And so we get to work ourselves up through these levels. Each level is each expansion of consciousness. So like each time we expand our consciousness, we get to level up a little bit in the game. And each time we clear karma, we're leveling up. Each time we choose compassion over anger, we're leveling up. So the ultimate goal is to have full compassion and love at all times in a form of neutrality. And so when this game was created, um, I, I'm still kind of like, I kind of feel like the, the negative ETs that came and disrupted this unity consciousness, this game, um, did it as a form of, I mean, they really did disrupt the game and then took over something that we made really beautiful. And I don't, I don't know. I don't want to get too much into that because I'm still on a receiving level with it. Um, it's constantly, that information for me is constantly evolving because it would be silly to blame the negative ETs for all of the, this horrible stuff when 
<clears throat> consciousness is the game. Consciousness is how we create everything. So in some way, I believe that being a human and having a human shadow created the lower frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like created the negative ETs to come in, you know, like there's, there's a lot to that, but the way I see it and the way I remember, um, the beginning, the creation of all of this is as the, the goal is to reach full and ultimate compassion in a game that has been shown to completely strip us away of that through all of the um, trauma and the things that are created inside of this game. But we do it for our growth. And I try to help people, like I want to help people understand it. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's just human. Let it go. It's just a human thing. Your soul's fine. <laughs> and people are like, what? This hurts. And I'm like, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. It's just human. <laughs> and um, it's so hard to, to get to this place or to help people get to this place of like not attaching to the human parts of being in this simulation i mean even i sometimes have to check myself and be like whoa why are you pissed off about this why are you worried about this it's so human it's silly you know but the, that's that's what this is all created for so let me ask you this because it sounds like um when the negative in uh, et's entered and i know you haven't fully developed this idea but i just wanted a little bit of clarity on are we a unity consciousness inside of a basically like an organic simulation or a simulation game that's isolated, right? It's a closed system, okay? So, but can be invaded by something or altered or added to by another thing that's in the same area or can affect the same area. So let's say, for instance, that that may be part of the experience, that entities have access to come in here and like Not move, entities, the, move the furniture around. Sorry, well, no, I no, should... no. That's okay, because I'm not necessarily, and I, we do a lot of UFO stuff here and paranormal stuff, and I'm not necessarily convinced that they're different things. I think at a macro level, you zoom out far enough, they're all the same damn thing. And you can look at the interdimensional hypothesis and stuff like that, and where they're, then it explains everything. Bigfoot, paranormal, UFOs, and then the, you know, the collaborative uh, reports of like the work of Jacques Vallée uh, that talk about multiple things that happen within and around a UFO contact or an alien extraterrestrial type contact because there's a bunch of stuff that happens too. So it could all be the same thing. But my question was is um, then it, it may be just an artifact perhaps, right? We're just talking about the ideas here, but it may just be part of the game as part of the game. You know what I mean? And then whenever you talk about karma, I wanted to ask you about this too, because now you just, you're, you're fascinating, by the way. And I, I love this conversation. So I just wanted to stop <laughs> you and say that. Uh, but what I wanted to say was uh, whenever we talk about like karma and clearing karma and that being a job or a mission here, the what, one thing that really sticks out to my mind as far as job and what's necessary here is the reports of people who have had near death experiences. This is something I'm fascinated by because when they leave or get, get out of this, body, this avatar, uh, they always talk about that there's no judgment, that they were shown their life, but they did the judging. Therefore, that what that means to me is that there's not necessarily something here that you do here that affects out there once this is over, if you don't choose to continue and come back, right? So the idea that there's karma or a job or contracts and things here, do you think that that's just how deep this game goes that it's not necessarily necessary but it is an option like a box you can check whenever you come into the game you're like okay i want to experience this i want the this package where we go do all this cool shit and then another option might be just to kind of ride jet skis and shit you know what i mean yeah <clears throat> well <clears throat> there's two things so i'm gonna mention filler people don't even forget that um so the karma the way i've been the way I'm, I'm remembering it is as our moral compass. So what we did in consciousness when we created this whole experience, we were like, okay, tranquila. <laughs> so we created this experience and we were like, okay, we're going to experience some pretty traumatic things because of these um, these contracts we created. So we're going to have to have a moral compass that gets us to be able to um, follow 
to be able to reach our state of enlightenment because the goal is um, to heal, to be able to enlighten ourselves enough to almost, it's like the goal is getting back to our highest form. Hmm. So the more we can um, heal traumas and go more into the light, into the higher frequencies, then we're coming back to oneness of ourself. And so the moral compass, the karma is that lever that says when we're getting back to um, reaching our level of oneness, reaching our level of of coming back to unity, because that's the goal. The goal is to come back and realize I am you and you are me and and, um, we don't have judgment. So that's kind of what, how I see karma. And I think that's why, I don't think, I know that's why the, that's why we've had that like cliche karma's a bitch or ooh that's going to be bad karma if you do bad things you're going to have bad things happen to you they made it they they you know the the rule is um they have to tell us about everything yeah you know yeah. the third dimensional has to tell us all the things so they just give us enough to where we have this really misconstrued idea of it and so people are like i don't believe in karma and it's like well because you're probably doing things that are low frequency but in their mind they it's bad and they told us that bad and good, there is no bad and good. There's high frequency and low frequency. And so it's that, that karma is the, the compass that's like, okay, you're doing good. You're raising your frequency. And then you drop down into choosing, you know, I don't know, a bender of drugs. And you're like, well, so there's like this compass that's, um, helping us get to our point, but we have to wake up and remember and hear that the karma is the thing to to work towards, which is energy. Karma is just energy exchanging and how many parallel timelines we create. So cool. And you know, the, the reason I wasn't a big fan of karma and I smelled it uh, early on, just like you did, is because the idea presented to you, which I completely agree is kind of an inverse of reality. It's the opposite of really what you should do. You know, it's kind of the theory on it uh, is all fear based. So it's 100 yes. percent fear based. It's OK. Yes. You only get good because you get good and you won't get good if you do bad. Right. So it's like this. It's horrible. And so that's why I was I was always like, fuck that. Right. I don't want to do that. Yeah. It's a dumb model. Uh, so come back to me with filler people. Okay. And I want to say um, the, the, the karma, I, I teach a lot about karma and I really have to like make video after video and talk and talk and talk to get people to want to take my karma class because the lower uh, consciousness, the lower 3D world has programmed us so good to not want to face that fear about karma. Yeah. <laughs> wild but that's why i'm like i'm i'm really passionate about sharing this information with people okay so filler people are <clears throat> not participating in the human game they are here um you know like in uh the the what are they dinosaurs or whatever that go on mario brothers and you have to avoid them yes. or some of them you can like win tokens from and stuff like that. You have to like know the game to know what, um, how you can benefit from them or not, or to avoid them. I love So this. literally like filler people they're here. Um, or some people will say, you never know who you're talking to. It could be an angel. It's the same exact sentiment of that person could be part of your, um, moral compass to decide did you just treat them like complete crap? And is your moral compass going, or which is creating karma? Or did you offer them love, grace, and compassion without judgment, which helps your moral compass go this way? So it's like, um, because of, of the, the idea that karma is you get what you give back, it's not completely untrue. Because what it's doing is you're creating energy and energy is cycling this way. So it's going to come back around. So is it going to come back around that it's high frequency energy that's going to come back into your reality? Or is it going to be low frequency energy that you're going to have to face again? But um, so filler people, they are really just 
part of the game. Yeah. And um, what I love <clears throat> is the more I'm the more I'm working on myself and like really managing my energy and learning about how to keep my energetic field really healthy and clean, I can recognize filler people. I can recognize them and be like, that person doesn't have an energetic field. What are you doing here? And it's almost like seeing... I don't want to say ghosts because ghosts are energy, but it's like recognizing a just a a lifeless, like a statue in the reality. It's wild and it feels different. It is. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Exactly what you're talking about. I've come across yeah. a few people where I'm like, you're not a person. Like, you're not real. It's crazy. Yeah. And just like you said, yeah. it is an energetic thing, but even actions. And and it was this observer effect where I was like, holy shit. And then you look around and you go, well, how many people around me are real? And this is the concept of NPCs or non-player characters. Same thing. But I like yours because they can kind of be appropriated to be angels or demons here you know they can teach you lessons yeah. or their opportunities for you and that's why i say all the time damn it you've just confirmed my observation about this that every interaction you have is an opportunity to, for you to be a greater grander version of who you really are yeah. or who you're choosing exactly. to be. exactly it, it's all about our soul's evolution everything is everything is literally everything is about our soul's evolution and so like just the little situations that we get that uh, are placed into our reality. Uh, for example, um, Layla, my cat, she came out of the jungle meowing at me and I was like, yay, a cat, I've been waiting for you. I knew you would come to me. And then um, got knocked up in like three days after coming to me. And uh, I was like, of course you do because all the mamas come to me. <laughs> well, and you're a powerful <laughs> manifester. You wanted a cat and you ended up with a litter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then her babies were born the day after I moved into Casa de Seba. And, um, and I was like, yay, kittens. And then they got to be, you know, five, six weeks old and they were all over the place. And I was like, oh, kittens. <laughs> and the message was immediate. Like, this is for you. Are you going to choose compassion or are you going to be upset that they're tearing up your curtains, that your plants are ruined, that you have to like, the message was, this is for me because I needed to reach another level of compassion. And another message was like, I mean, I was pissed. I was like, I'm having to move all my plants. I'm like, I had to like relocate clothing because they were climbing my clothes. And they were going to ruin my clothes. And I was just like, Oh, and it was like, but you think you can have a baby? Yeah. Like a yeah. human child? <laughs> what is that going to be like? And I was like, ooh, okay. So I had to like completely acknowledge this gift that was given to me, which is this is another level that I get to at attain if I choose compassion. And there were days where I was like, I don't want this anymore. <laughs> but... You know, I managed and I did it and I had like five cats for like three months and it was wild. Um, and then my mama cat started getting really fat and I was like, crap, I got her spayed, but like, did it go wrong? So I had to take her to the vet and ask, I was like, please tell me she's not pregnant. I do not need to learn this lesson again. And sure enough, she was just getting fat. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was really grateful. Really, for thank God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I honestly could talk to you about everything forever. Uh, we, I think, have a lot more to talk about, but let's save it for another time. I wanted to close on one final thing just because I have one more, uh, and then here goes our dogs. Uh, and one uh, final thing to ask you here, just pertaining back to the simulation idea or the game idea, because I love this one. It's one of those ones where you start talking about it in that way and in that context, and it really lends itself to way more opportunity for creativity as far as the interpretation of your 
surroundings, your environment, right? Because now you view it through that filter, but now we introduce the concept of non-player characters or artifacts of the matrix that are here to play a role. They they play a role, which is my point. This is this is the way I've been looking at it lately, is that it's like a movie set, okay? Not just a movie, a movie set. And you get to choose the role that you auditioned for, which is what you're here to do. So you're here as the hero, because that's your journey. But there's other people around you that are there just to sweep the floors. And you've got a director that's yelling orders at you that's uh, your higher self saying, hey, go that way, you know, go that way, but you're the artist, so you've got, you know, a prima donna, you do your own thing. But, you know, uh, there's also people that are just walking around in the background. And so all of those technically are there for a role or a purpose. It seems like maybe some people have a job here to do as far as soul's evolution goes, because you're aware of it, because you know it, but it's not necessarily for everyone, right? Do you think that that's possible at all? Yeah, absolutely. And and some of the people are literally just here to empower the person who has a big mission yes exactly like, <clears throat> the supporting actor some of us, what's that the supporting actor in the model exactly yeah. exactly and um a lot of those tend to be the people who um trigger us a lot they're doing it because that is what they literally signed up for i'm going to create this in you so that you will rise and it's like once you can can see that as <clears throat> like i would say um angie my my birth mother i i finished that contract with her about 10 years ago but i am uh, absolutely the woman i am because she was my mother because of the challenges that came with her role, I learned who to be, who and who not to be, and how to be strong, and how to do all the things that I know how to do that um, came from her presence in my role. Her role, her character played a huge part in this. And for the longest time, I had so much hate towards her. And now I have so much gratitude towards her. And that's part of us being able to heal is being able to see that she is, she played her part perfectly for me, but it takes us um, owning and claiming our power. It took me going, yeah, I am super powerful and I have a really big mission and I am worthy of this mission. And she literally was here to empower me to reach this level of awareness. And it takes confidence in being able to say that without worrying that people are going to perceive me as whatever they perceive me as because I tell, I'd tell i say that I'm powerful. I had to get past that concern and go, okay, well, you can be powerful too if you choose it, if you decide that you want to claim that power. And as soon as I did, I was able to see everybody's contribution to be able to get me through this mission. We're not all here on a huge mission, but I know my mission is big and I know that everybody played their role perfectly to get me here and I acknowledge it. You and I have a lot more in common than we think, uh, and we'll have to just do that on the next one. So I'll be linking all the ways that everybody can find you down in the show notes, but do just tell us what you got coming up. What I have coming up? Yeah, just the next thing to look forward to, to put on our radar for you. Um, okay, well, I do have more coming up on my podcast. Um, the, oh God, what else is there? I mean, there's so much going on at Casa de Seva, uh, mentorship program. I'm really trying to, um, work again virtually with people doing what I call an Ascension blueprint. It's me working one-on-one. -on -one. I especially love to do this with people who are also leaders or guides and healers so I can tune in to their higher counsel um, and be of service and showing them more of like their ascension blueprint essentially. And um, I have my mentorship program that I'm still accepting applications for 2022 is almost full, but hell I'll, accept applications for the following year because I'll be doing this forever and yeah I feel like that the, the best way to which I am super excited about to um, stay 
up to date with all of the things that Casa de Seva and Mama Michelle, or Mama Michelle are doing is through my newsletter. And that's all linked to my link tree. Um, I want to also, because of obviously the, the situation that we are in, not everybody can make it to Costa Rica to do um, Ascension Immersion with me physically here. So I'm creating an online community type of um, situation where people can can do the Ascension Immersion with the, you know, the topics that we covered here, which are from unlocking your star origin language, which is what people call the light language, to um, the karma, to the healing our bloodline. I mean, there's, there's just a ton of things that you can see on my website of the Ascension Immersion offerings that we will cover. And um, just creating a, a new earth virtual community and creating my new earth physical community here is what I do whenever the mentees come to work with me. Um, so far, nobody is wanting to move back to where they came from. <laughs> That's so nice. I mean, That's a good Yelp review. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Like five yeah. stars. Cool. <laughs> Uh, well, Bob Michelle, I can't thank you enough. This has been amazing. I've, like I said, I've been a fan for your, of yours for a while, and so this has been an honor, uh, and it's just been badass. You're just cooler uh, than I thought you would be, which is great. Like I know I was just <laughs> neutral about it, but actually I was excited too, and you exceeded that. So thank you so much. Well, You're just happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will do it again, and thank you so much again for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed it. I want to give a huge thanks to Mama Michelle for spending some time with us. All the ways to find her will be linked down in the show notes. Check out her podcast as well, Ascension Immersion. Uh, we have so much more to talk about with her. This was tip of the iceberg, not even tippy tip of the iceberg. Uh, you couldn't even plant a flagpole uh, on the tip of that iceberg that we just talked about. So there's so much more to come with her, guys. Uh, definitely go check her out. Check out some of her mentoring programs. Uh, again, she is fascinating and just really, really cool. So uh, all the ways to find this show, if you want to expand your experience with us here, uh, check the show notes down there as well for expandingrealitypodcast.com. That is where links to everything can be found. Rockfin, merch, uh, we got some new t-shirt designs up that are fucking awesome, and um, I think they're great, so go check those out. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff going on over there, guys, so uh, go check that thing out. Also, all the videos are up on YouTube and all that good shit. You know what you're doing. Uh, so go out in this beautiful place, you know? Um, look at it through a few different lenses that's the nice thing about talking to somebody like mama shell is that we get to view our world around us with some new lenses as we walk around amongst the uh, perhaps filler people um which is really cool it's a non-player character idea i love it way to go so um bup, 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 go out there into this world and uh pick up a piece of litter of course um be nice to everybody that you come across guys um get out of that left hand lane because that's a huge pain in the ass uh, buy somebody in line around you a coffee or a meal or a bottle of water something simple make somebody's day it's incredible raise the vibe out there guys that's another great way to do it uh, and above all and anything else go out into this beautiful place whatever the hell it is and y'all just be good to one another thank you so much for listening we'll see you next time